Hey, welcome to the Intact Beyond Transformation Series. I'm Nathan Dale, CEO of Intact Beyond. Thanks very much for joining us. We're a collective of subject matter experts who've all come together to help communities get through this time and thrive beyond. Uh, facilitating today is Nicole Watson, and we have two subject matter experts in this deep dive, Sarah Skeets and Tim Dwyer from the Business of Brand or Bob Earth. Uh, they're gonna be talking to us about how to activate personal brand as well as how to have a growth mindset as we go through this crisis and come out the other side. So I'll throw over to the guys now and thanks again for joining us. My name is Nicole Watson and I will be facilitating today's deep dive with Sarah Skeets and Tim Dwyer from Bob. Hi Sarah, hi Tim, how are you today? Good Nicole, hello. Thank you, hi everyone. Great, thank you so much for um, sharing your expertise with the Intact Beyond community. Um, look, it's been a really um, difficult testing time how has this time affected um, you guys and also your business? Uh, well, like everyone, um, this has uh, turned everything upside down. Uh, moving from an offline world to an online world, um, moving through where people have been going through lockdown and changes of behaviour and social change and economic change. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a really interesting uh, experience. Uh, so um, we've, we've been pretty busy, so we're sort of kind of working twice as hard uh, to get to, to shift into a new pattern, so to speak, like everyone is. So I think we're just part of uh, going through the same thing everyone else is around the world. Mm, definitely. It's been a bit of a, a roller coaster ride, I think, for, um, for most people. And, you know, as humans, we're, we're very adverse to change, particularly forced change. But I think, um, you know, we've definitely learned a lot. Um, from this period and I hope that we take those learns and, and those positive things that we've you know that we've managed to um to foster into that new era and into the future yeah yeah it's uh, they, they say don't waste a good crisis and this is a good one <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is all about the opportunity for change yeah fantastic so look would you like to give us a bit of an overview of what you'll be focusing on today please yeah I'd love to do that so today we're going to look at the new ways of working. So everything changes in an L-shaped recession. So we're going to talk about the trends and why things have been changing and then areas to focus on. And personal brand is one of those areas that's really important during one of these times. And we're going to share with you some tools and some tricks around how to build your personal brand internally within your business, but also externally into the market. Okay, so like I said, today we're going to be talking to you about the new era of work and what that means. So we are Bob, um, known as Business of Brand, and we're shifting the world into the new era. We're doing that by building brands to impact industries to really make a difference in the world. We're also the first purpose-led platform, connecting businesses globally for trade. And we're founded by Lindsay Boyd and Darren Sherlaw. They are, they are the co-founders in the UK. And we really focus on brand and working with purpose-led brands and purpose-led people. And today we're going to be exploring a little bit about working with people who can really make a difference. And that's by building your personal brand. I'm going to introduce you to Lindsay and Darren now. Little video that we've got to show. Um, we produced this video about three or four years ago based on um, Darren is a global economic commentator and he actually predicted this recession was coming and he's also looked at what is going to happen post-recession. So I'd love to share this with you. He didn't predict the pandemic, but uh, he did say that we were, we were due for a recession about this time now. So uh, pre, pre going into a very, very high growth area. Uh, a growth segment from 2021 to 2031. From horse to car, from feet to flight, Ford's assembly line to plastic, the 20th century's mass production machine sent the whole world into a spin. The new century brought a faster pace. The digital age, brands that have come out of nowhere, that have taken over society, how they're impacting change and how do we keep up with that change? We've moved into a new era. The who era is now all about the emotional connection of your customer and how are you going to engage with them? Not on a sales journey, 
but on an emotional journey. The 20th century was all about efficiency. Everything was built in grid lines. Our cities, our hospitals, even the chicken pens. Nature was not built in grid lines. The world now wants creativity with a fusion of technology. So who do they put their trust in? If they've lost faith in big institutions, then they're looking to each other for support. They're looking to the entrepreneur, somebody that connects with their emotions. It's not about capital. It's not about product. It's not about making it in a suit or a pair of shorts. It's not even about building a business. It's about what you really want to be known for. Growth comes in cycles. We forecast the future to understand and predict trends. Between 2021 and 2031, the world will witness an unprecedented amount of growth. More innovation in society than we've ever seen before. What if we could build our businesses with this vision in mind? What if we could shift education, health, manufacturing? How can you build a business to impact change in the world? What I love about this video is sharing that it's not all doom and gloom, that we are in for a really big period of growth. So 2021 to 2031 is when we will see the, the biggest unprecedented period of growth. Um, there will be innovation, there will be new things coming into the market, and we want to make sure everyone's ready for that. Yeah, so, um, so where, where we're up to right now is uh, we're in a, a massive shift from one way of thinking about uh, the way we work and the outcomes we achieve uh, from what we call 20th century thinking and patterns to 21st century thinking and patterns. Uh, now, in the 20th century, as you saw in that uh, video, um, the 20th century was all about things in grid lines and everything was about efficiency. Um, and as a result of that, a lot of the business models and the business approach uh, was all around how can you get things done quicker, how can you get things um, uh, more efficient through some technology. But most of it around the human being was all about just making sure that you had people's time. Um, and so it was actually having people, enough people in an office, in a work environment, making sure that they spent their time from this time to this time. You got the value based on how much they actually showed up. Um, uh, the other thing around it was uh, a lot of uh, uh, industries and a lot of businesses would go to market with what we call a push out to the a push out message. Um, and so what's happening now is that the, the full shift has moved over uh, where businesses and humans and people are being valued for the value they bring, not the time that they bring. Um, and so when that starts to shift fully, uh, we're going to see quite a lot of change in the 21st first century work environment uh, because it's all about the outcomes that we can produce uh, rather than the time it takes us to produce those outcomes. The other thing is uh, in the marketing space, uh, it's all about activating the, all of the value that sits in the human being uh, rather than just the value of them showing up. So what we're looking to, what businesses are looking for, for now is they're going, well, let's have a look at the, the entire value of this person that's, uh, that's come to work for our organisation rather than just the little bit that we're asking them to do. Uh, because when we get really, really specific about asking someone to come and perform a task or a role inside the business, what we're not doing is we're not exploring the full value of what that person could be bringing to the organisation. So what we're going to talk through today is uh, a, little, a, a lot more depth about how do you actually understand the full value of a human being and the full value of what we can bring to an organisation. And that's what we call 21st century thinking. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think about, at the beginning of this, of this presentation, I want you to just to think about what if every person brought their whole self to the business? What would that mean? What impact would that have if everyone was able to bring their whole self and not just bring the work self to work? And we're going to, sh we're going to show you through this presentation how you can do that. So where do we focus? So today we're going to talk about turning your personal brand into an asset. We often hear people saying, oh, you, you help build personal brand. 
Um, does that mean I'll get a social media strategy? I don't want to be on social media. But I really want to emphasize personal brand is not a social media exercise. It's a, it's a full, complete omni channel. We're going to show you five steps to actually owning your personal brand. And we're going to give you some ways to activate your personal brand internally within the business, but also externally to market, which is a really important. I used to run brand and marketing at NAB. And my learning was I built my personal brand really strongly within the business, but I hadn't really focused externally. And it's when you can do both of those that you can really make an impact. Tim, do you want to talk through why personal brand is so important right now? Yeah. Okay. So uh, one, one of the key things uh, to note right now is uh, we're, we're, we're going into what we call an L-shaped recession. Now, as Sarah said at the beginning of the presentation, um, our business partners, uh, Darren Sherlaw and Lindsay Boyd, are based in the UK. Um, and Darren uh, is an economic commentator and he's uh, um, uh, been able to predict patterns and cycles in the economic equation uh, for the last, I mean, we've been, I've been working with him for the last 20 years uh, and he's always been pretty spot on uh, of exactly what's going to happen in the economy, not what's happened, but what's going to happen. Um, so through the global financial crisis, he talked us all the way through what exactly was going to happen through that, um, documented all of that and um, time stamped it. So if anyone wants to go back and have a look, they can go and have a look at that. Uh, but uh, in 2013, we were talking and he sort of said, look, around about 2019, after October 2019, we'll be due for a L-shaped recession. Um, and an L-shaped recession means that it goes down very, very sharply um, and then it goes flat for a period of time before it then goes into a high growth period. Uh, so macroeconomic side of things, economies go up 18 years and they go across 14 years and they go up 18 years. Um, and we're six to seven years into the 18 year up. Uh, but in, 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 that, in that history, going back for as long as we've been keeping records, um, six to seven years into the 18 years up, there's an L-shaped recession. Um, now, no one can predict what creates the L-shaped recession. It just, it's just a pattern that happens in economic cycles. Uh, certainly no one could have predicted the, the pandemic, um, although Bill Gates did um, run a, a TED talk on it in two, 2013 saying we're not prepared for one, but he never knew uh, when one was going to actually happen. Um, so what the pandemic's done is uh, created the shock in the economy to drive the, the, the market down, which then what that then leads to, it pushes us into um, an L-shaped recession. Now, an L-shaped recession means the economy goes down or the, the market goes down by 30%. Um, in, a, in a matter of months. And, and so uh, in uh, March, it went down by that 30%. And then it, what happens is it then goes flat and it bounces along uh, for a period of time, uh, generally for 18 months, uh, whilst, the business, whilst the economy recovers. Now, it's during that 18 months uh, that businesses shift and change. Uh, this is the opportunity for everything in the, in the, in, in the market to actually change the way that things were done. Uh, all, what a recession is, it's an opportunity to remove the inefficiencies that sit in the marketplace. Now, uh, and then what also happens is all of the old business models and the old way of doing work um, that weren't effective then change. And all the businesses and all the people that change their mindset and change that way they do their work today and move into what we call the new era of work will then go into this massive growth period from 2021 to 2031. So everything shifts. So uh, organisations have to shift their thinking, and, but most importantly, the individuals within the organisation have to shift the way that they do things and create the value for the organisation. Uh, when they shift and they know how to create that value and they know how to demonstrate the creation of that value, um, then they're able to shift their organisation into the new era. Uh, now, with uh, the, the, the L-shaped recession, this one is different um, uh, because there's three trends, there's three factors in this one. Number one, um, it's been 100 years since we've had a pandemic. Uh, the last one was since 1919. 
Um, uh, we haven't had a wartime economy um, since the 40s, um, since World War II, um, and uh, we haven't had an L-shaped recession uh, since 1987. So L-shaped recessions go every 32 years. Uh, so very few people have actually managed a business through these times. Um, so this is where we all need to come together and reimagine how we actually do business today and how we actually uh, value what it is that we contribute to and how do we actually change and change the way that we do work. Uh, now, through the L-shaped recession, there's different phases. So the first phase for the first three months is everyone's in shock. So we're in uh, shock so, now. This yeah, is the phase yeah. we're in right now. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going through the shock phase together. Uh, and it's globally, we're going through that shock phase, which is quite extraordinary. Um, now, once we get, so that's um, uh, April, uh, April, May, June is where the main shock period is. So we're in the middle of it. Um, then once we go through the shock period and you'll see in the market, you know, a lot of the commentary about the pandemic, but then we'll move into the economy and you'll see a lot more commentary around the economy starting now, but it will be mostly about the economy when it comes to July, August, September. Uh, and that's where we're recovering from the shock of the pandemic. And we're now moving into, oh, my God, what do we need to do now inside our organisations to change and, and to shift the way that we do things uh, because everything's changed. Nothing will go back to the way it was pre the pandemic. The, the whole of the way that we work. So we're, we're not going to be going back to, uh, uh, the, the, we'll just go back to the way it was. It, that's not going to happen. So the change of habits is really going to be cemented through that period in business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so if you look at the, the, the different things, so the L-shaped economy changes the products. So products change when we have an L-shaped economy. And when you have pandemics, what you have is you have social change, right? Um, and then when you have wartime economy, um, you have supply chains change. Mm. So, so... This is the, all the trend lines and all the things that used to be have all been broken, which means that there'll be a whole lot of people that look for different opportunities to change the way that we work, to change the way that we bring market products to market, to change the way we service our clients, uh, the, the way that we treat our culture and how we treat our people. Everything changes as a result of this situation. <laughs> So the L-shaped recession has been really important and that really means that every organisation, there's a huge opportunity now for every organisation to ensure that every employee can bring their full self and their full value to the business. And we need that now more than ever. We need it personally um, we all, and we also need it within the businesses. So personal brand is the way to do that. It's the key component for the new era in business. All right, I'm just going to talk you through, um, as we said, we look at trends. And here we're looking at the trend of um, emotion and how, how we connect with people from a marketing perspective. So back in the 50s, 60s and 70s, we were really focused on the how era. And as you can see there, it was all focused on the product. So it was the one TV because there wasn't very many products. So that was enough to connect with the audience and that's all the audience needed. Then the, the trends change, obviously, and we got to the 70s, 80s and 90s and image started coming around product and, and we started to connect around image. So not just the one pair of shoes, it's what colour pair of shoes or, or there's all these options now and what image do you want to portray? And... We evolved through that period um, and Tim and I speak to lots of rooms of people and I'll always ask, does anyone know who this guy is? And every time, really, the whole room will put their hand up and say, this is Simon Sinek and he's known for his book, Start With Why. And it's a really important um, connection point, purpose and why. But what we look at is the trend. And if everyone in a room is telling us that they know who Simon Sinek is, then this trend is over. It doesn't mean it's not important. Purpose is, is really important. But it's actually what, what do the audience now need? What's the next trend um, that the audience need to connect with people? And yeah, it's, it's all around emotion. Yeah, it's, it's really important to know that when we trend lines, what happens with that is it then becomes part of society. 
Yeah. It's, it's a given. Uh, so it's a given that we want to know how a product works for us. It's a given that we know we want to know what it does. Uh, and it's now a given that people want to know why they, they're doing what they're doing. Mm. Um, and, and, and now that that's a given. Now what's the next given that people are actually now moving towards, which is the yeah. next trend? And this is the trend. So we've been talking about this for a couple of years. It's the, the trend of emotion. And it's connecting emotionally with a brand and with a person. And the way that, that we can connect emotionally with a brand is through our, our people and through the personal brands within a business. So we need to understand the full emotional journey of our clients or who we're talking with or who we're connecting with or, or our internal clients if you're in a large corporate um, understand that emotional journey and connect with people on that one-to-one -one emotional level. And it's what we call, we used to talk about business to business marketing or business to consumer marketing, but now it's just business to people. It's just about that emotional connection. And that's why personal brand is so important right now. We look at future mapping as well. So again, trends are really important. And here I've looked at the future map of fame. So how, do, how did people build personal brands? How did people get famous? And there is a difference between fame and personal brand. Fame is around celebrity, but personal brand is when you have the entire, you're really clear about what it is that you want to be doing. And we're gonna take you through that architecture in a moment. But how did people become famous and get personal brands when we were back in the 1996 to 2006? And this was the offline era. So this was, we didn't have digital at this point. So it was media fame. And people became famous really through shows like uh, Big Brother. So Chrissy Swan, she was on Big Brother in 2003 completely unknown before she went on to Big Brother and then it became a platform that she could launch herself from and she's now gone on to do radio and she's now everywhere and she has built her personal brand really strongly. It's, 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 it's important to note here as well, Sarah, that um, a lot of people look at this and they say, I don't want that. Yeah. Um, and so a, a lot of the this thing around personal brand and a lot of the blocks to people understanding their personal brand and then bringing their personal brand out, which we'll show you a little bit later in this presentation. One of the blocks is the history. Um, so people have seen this and go, I don't want to be like that. Absolutely. Um, uh, so it's important to know that this era is over. So that's past. So we need to let that go to understand what's happening in the future so that you can, uh, you can actually participate in it. So we don't have to go on Big Brother is what you're saying. No. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So then we came into the online era. So this was where we built virtual communities and we started to see it change. So this was the trend where we started to see YouTube fame. So now you don't have to go on TV anymore. Now you can just sit in your bedroom like Justin Bieber and become a famous, famous pop star. Um, and there's all sorts of amazing YouTubers who have become famous just by doing what they're really passionate about and what they're really connected to. So and that again, is now finished. <laughs> and again, we're not asking you to go on your <laughs> YouTube channel to create your brand. That is history. <laughs> that is finished. Um, what we're talking about is an on and offline uh, personal brand. So it's about building uh, in a way that connects with people in the channels that work for you, and we call it omni-channel. So you, it's not a social media channel. Even though we're going to talk about Google fame, we're now in the era of Google fame. So, Tim, what do you do when you meet someone for the first time and you're going to have a meeting with them? What would you do? You Google them. You Google them. And you're going to look really quickly. And it's actually shown that people Google people's personal names over the company that they work in. They will first Google the person, then they will Google the company. So we are all already brands on the internet. We can Google all of us and we're going to see the story that um, Google tells. So what I want to teach you guys is to be able to own that story whether you don't you don't do anything else as long as you can own your personal brand and the space that you're in and it tells the story that you need it and you want it to tell so this is an example uh lindsay boyd we've talked about our our founder 
If you Google Lindsay Boyd, you'll see she has pages and pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of images and all different images. It's not the same image, you know, 10, 20 times, all different images. And what Lindsay's been doing. So when, um, when Lindsay was uh, 19, she started her first business. By the age of 24, she'd sold two businesses. The second one was a shoe business to Caterpillar. And what Lindsay realised back then was the power of personal brand. And she started building her personal brand then and she built it on and offline. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means. And like I said earlier in the presentation when I was at NAB, Lindsay and I both build brands and build personal brands, but I went the much more boring route. I went, you know, <laughs> I went and studied and, and worked in corporates while she was off having fun and, and building amazing businesses. Um, and I, I focused on building my brand internally, but when I learned the power of doing both, that was when it really clicked for me. And it's important to note too that Lindsay, Lindsay did build her brand through social. Um, so she, she does do, she's, she's what we call a social entrepreneur and a social uh, personal brand person. But when we go, you don't have to be social to build your brand onto Google. Um, That's so right. You can be anti-social and still be on Google and Google um, and show up on Google everywhere. I think you're and a great, if, yeah. you're, if you're online now, go and Google, Google Lindsay Boyd and see what comes up and then Google Darren Sherlorn. <laughs> Darren's our biz other business partner and we call him antisocial <laughs> because he, he, up until about three weeks ago, was never on Facebook, was never on any social media platforms. He said he would speak from stage and he would do videos. Yeah. So there are, there are different ways of building that profile depending on what's right for you. Yeah. Tim, do you want to talk through the three different types of personal brand yeah. strategies? So, so um, thanks, Sarah. So with this, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an understanding of, number one, um, when we talk about personal brand, we're, we're talking about being authentic in what your personal brand is and being able to then take that authenticity uh, to the marketplace. Now, it's then about understanding where you sit and what position you play on the field for your team. Um, so if we take a football analogy, uh, there's what we call strikers, um, midfield and defence. Uh, so the strikers are the ones that are out the front. Uh, they're the ones that are kicking the goals. They're the ones that are um, showing everyone what the team can do and how many goals the team can score. Uh, but they're out the front on behalf of the team. Um, so in, in, uh, in business world, a striker would be on stage. Uh, they would be doing videos. Uh, they would, some of them will choose to go and do social media. Um, uh, they will write the thought leadership pieces and get it out in there and, and, and talk about it on radio or TV or be interviewed um, on a podcast. So they're all the ones that are at the face and at the front of an organisation. Uh, so in our organisation, we've got four strikers in our business, our Darren Sherlaw, Lindsay Boyd, Sarah and myself, we're all the strikers in our business. But then there's a whole lot of mid, mid, midfield people that are um, semi strike like that what they'll do is they'll do some of the social side of things, they'll do some videos, they'll do, but then that's not their full-time job. Uh, they're there to bring everything together, uh, make, sing, make sure things work the way they're supposed to be working. Um, and so we call them the mid midfield people. They will quite often have a very strong profile and a very strong uh, connection piece between the strikers and the defence. So they'll know what the strikers need, but they'll also know what the people in, in defence need. So they're the link between the strikers and the defence. And then you've got people that are in the defence side of things, and they're the ones that really make everything tick. Uh, they make sure that the organisation is, is on a really solid footing, um, and they make sure that they're, um, everyone in the organisation is getting what they need to, to perform the tasks that they perform. Um, now, it's really important to understand that it doesn't matter whether you're a striker, a midfield or defence. Every single person in the organisation needs to be Googled. They need to be able to be Googled and people know. So even if you're in a defensive position, you need to, the the organization needs to know you for what your position is and they know what you're, you're performing if you're in midfield they need to know if you're in striker they need to know 
it's not just the strikers. It's everyone in the in the in the need to be known for for the value that they're bringing and what position they're playing inside the organisation. I love this analogy because I think that it shows, like in a football team, every single position is as important as the other. And just because some people are going to be strikers, it doesn't mean that it's more important than a, a role in defence. So. If, if your natural place is to play a defence role, the strikers couldn't do what they did if they didn't have the defence. Absolutely. I mean, the, the whole thing falls down unless the defence and midfield are there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about building your brand internally within the business, but also externally to market and why we would do this. So Tim touched on this in uh, at the very beginning when we talked about how we're moving in the 20th century from a push model to a pull model. So a push model is where we go out and talking about, um, from a brand perspective, our products and benefits. So from a personal perspective, it might be when we're going out and talking about, um, you know, we've done X or we've done Y, or we've done Z, rather than pulling the market in towards us, which is connecting to what we're all about. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So, so can I can I just before we go to the next bit? So, the, um, the 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 important thing around personal brand and profile, it's it's actually an asset that sits within you. Uh, it sits within each human being inside an organisation, and it's about getting that into a profile and then turning that into an asset. Um, because we all have what we what what we call true value. Uh, and every single person has a different background and has a different history. And when we know what the history is, there's an asset that sits in every single one of us as a result of our history. Uh, and it's that asset that we need to look at working out how we actually turn that into a profile and then turn that into an asset. Uh, when people are really truly connected to their true value, what happens is, that, and, and, they, and they know how to articulate that and they know how to, to, to own that as their asset, what happens is more opportunities will open up for those people. Uh, more money will come in as a result because they're, they're producing more value into the organisation and they tend to actually create more time for themselves because they're, they're, they're not mixed up in the noise of thinking about what they should be doing um, and, and shooting all over themselves going, I should be doing this, I should be doing that, uh, because they're just trying to do everything because they're not connected into what their true value is. When people are connected in with their true value, they can walk into a room, give their value, and then walk out. <laughs> Metaphorically, that is. Yeah. And a great example, when I was at NAB and r running the brand team, I was looking to employ a social media manager for the team. And... I thought, right, if we're doing social media, then we need someone who knows how to actually, who has a personal brand and is really clear about that. So I actually went out and found um, someone who had created their profile and went and actually um, tapped that person on the shoulder and asked them if they'd like to come and work with us because they had already turned their profile into an asset. So if you can do that and if you're really clear about what value you bring internally within the organisation, it's going to create opportunities for different job um, positions and opportunities, as well as externally out in the market. Okay, so I just want to talk you through, we keep talking about true value and connecting in, and it's not a social media campaign. And so I just want to show you what that means. And authenticity. <laughs> and authenticity. So how it's do we get that? That's yeah, kind yeah. of the, the, the piece that I want to show you. I'm just going to take you through, there are three really key important pieces. So first of all, we always look at the who. So I spoke about the who, we're in the, the um, era of who and the era of emotion. So I want you to think about who are you talking to and what are they feeling through the whole journey of communicating with them or solving their problem or whatever it might be. Who is it that you're talking to and what are they feeling and, and making sure that you can connect with them emotionally around that? Yeah, so, so with this one here is um, we're, we're all here to serve someone or such. We're, we're all here to serve. Every single human being on the planet is here to serve in some way. Um, in the who side of things, it's who we're here to serve. Um, so if, we, if we're a defence, we're here to serve the the, the 
um, uh, the midfield and the strikers. Um, if we're a striker, we're here to serve the midfield and the defence. So it's, it's who we're here to serve and who do we need to be connecting with, but we need to connect with them at an emotional level, not just at a thinking level. Second one. Sorry, can I just... And that's not being yeah. touchy-feely. It's just that we... Can... <laughs> I love that you're talking about touchy-feely. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's not, it's not that we have to go talking about our feelings the whole time and all that. No, not, not at all. What I'm, saying. what I'm saying is we just need to know who we want to connect into from our side of things to know we really want to connect in uh, with and serve that person, that, that type of person. So for us, it's the face of modern business. Uh, for other people, it might be the accountants or it might be the striker. Or it's, it's just who do you want to really connect in with? Yeah. The second element we want to get really clear on is your purpose. So like Tim said, we're here to serve. What is it that you want to be known for? So what is, what is it that you're here to do and what do you want people to know you for? So there's everyone will know the saying of brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And there's elements of that that are true. So what do you want people to actually be saying about you? What is it that you are known for? And then you build your personal brand all around that thing. Now, the third element. Can you, can you, give, can you give a couple of examples there, Sarah? Yeah, sure. So my personal brand is to um, help other people connect into their value. So, and I do that through building brands and through building personal brands. I also have a whole heap of knowledge around other areas, marketing, all these other things, but I only build my brand around personal brand and brand because that's what you, you want to be as single minded around your building your personal brand. You can't be known for too many things. It's much easier. If you um, Google me, then you'll see brand, 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 brand. So if anyone's looking for someone to talk to about brand, then they're going to know that that's, uh, that's me and that's because that's what, what I connect into and that's my purpose. Yeah, and if, if and Sarah and I are very aligned on this um, because what, what, what my purpose is is to show people what their true asset is. Um, so what I love doing is finding what people's true value is um, and then what Sarah then does is would show them how to actually connect in with that and turn it into a brand. So I look for the person's asset and then say, Sarah, can you please help this person now turn it into a brand? Because that asset is gold. Yeah. And that's the third element, Tim. Mm -hmm. um, so the third one is asset. Do you want to talk about what an asset is then for a person? Yeah. yeah so an asset, is, uh, an asset is what your true value actually is. It's what sits within you. And uh, when we take people through this, it, it, it's, it's quite mind. It's a, it's a, it's a real mind shift. Uh, because uh, it's, it's what you're all about and what your talent is. Um, and it's not always obvious. It's not what you do. It's your, not your job title. It's not what you do. It's how you go about doing it um, and how you then release that. So um, uh, through the, the Bob School, um, uh, I really got to connect in with my own personal asset because um, you can't sit, often see it yourself. And what my personal asset is, when I go into an organisation, um, I can get, I can see insights, and I can get those insights out of what they can do differently in a creative way. Um, so my my personal brand is to be creatively insightful, um, and so that's the asset that I bring to a conversation when I'm working with management teams or I'm working with teams of businesses, teams of people within businesses. Um, so I can I can see what's inside, and I can find a creative way to give that insight to that person. So that's my asset. So yeah. every single person has an asset. Yeah. Um, and it's just about working out what it is and how you can articulate it, but really connect with it so that you can then own that. Yeah, it's like the magic herbs and spices. It is. It is. <laughs> and everyone's is slightly different. And we actually, I'm going to talk about you in a moment, Tim. Um, so I'm now just going to share... There are five ways that we're going to help you build your personal brand. So like I said, you are already a brand on the internet. If you Google yourself, you will find the story that is being told about you to anyone else who is searching for you. So we want you to own this space in the market. There are five ways that we're going to share with you. So the first one is to speak it. 
So we really want you to be able to have your voice in market. Now, one of the really uh, strong tools to connect in a speak it way is video. It's one of the easiest ways to connect emotionally, even when you're, you're speaking about your topic. Um, stories, you can create your toolkit, you can have um, podcasts, you can write articles, you can use LinkedIn, um, you can use any of the social platforms that work for you. You don't have to use any of them or all of them. Uh, but speaking it, make sure that the thing that you're really clear about, that you want to be known about, you are speaking it into, into the space. Be it. So we really need to embody it. We need to be it. We need to become the influencer in that area. So get very clear about it and then do everything you can to become the influencer. Do the study, write the papers, do the research, um, build the community around you or build the community of like-minded people so that you are known as being it. Look it. Now, <laughs> this is where I'm going to share um, a couple of case studies. Looking at, it sounds like it might not be that much, but it's such an important part of your personal brand. It's your brand style. Now, let me show you. You might recognize this guy. <laughs> um, so this is Tim about four years ago, did you say Tim? Five, five years ago, yeah. Five years ago. And uh, Tim's, Tim and I started working Bob Australia. And like, like Tim said, he went through the process and um, Tim came from corporate um, and was still wearing his corporate suit. And he looks like it's a beautiful suit, he looks very intelligent, um, but it does, actually doesn't look like him. You can yeah, see him so, on the screen today. Can I share a story here? So, so um, I do quite a lot of public speaking and, um, and I, 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 as Sarah said, I came out of corporate. Um, and I went and started working with the small and medium enterprise market and showing them how to grow. Um, and uh, what I didn't realise is I took my corporate look with me um, uh, into the small and medium enterprise market. And I, would, and I would go talk about how you grow and the mathematics of growth and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I'd be in front of a stage of a thousand people or whatever, and no one would come up and talk to me afterwards. Um, whereas they'd be talking to all the other speakers and I'd say to people, I say, wasn't my stuff interesting? Everyone goes, yeah, it's really interesting. It's just that everyone's scared of you. <laughs> so they, they, did, they didn't want to come up and talk to me because they were scared of me. This is now Tim and what we've done is he spoke about being incredibly insightful and that being his asset. So now he dresses in a way that is incredibly insightful and, and now I speak with him on stages and now he has lines of people wanting to talk to him. So it can be a really powerful, a powerful piece. Yeah, it's really important. And I wish I, I wish I knew this when I was in the corporate market, uh, because in the corporate market, if you, if you don't know what your personal brand is, uh, what happens is you, is you, is you just follow everyone else. Um, so you get in your suit and your tie and you, and, be, and you, and you, you put your suit of armor on, um, because that's all you know. Um, whereas if I actually knew what my personal brand was in corporate, I would have dressed more like this in corporate um, and I would have had a different impact in there as well because it would have been different um, and it, it would have showed who I am. Maybe not the green, maybe not quite that much of the corporate, but why not? Um, so, uh, yeah, so I wish I'd known about it earlier because it would have made a much, much bigger difference for my impact that I would have had as well because it would have been who I am. Yeah, and particularly important right now because this is the window into our houses and we're now in a different space. So the work, the work has changed. We're letting people into our personal spaces that we didn't ever have to do before when we were working in a, in a, in a bigger business. So being really clear about what your personal brand is, so the look and how you translate that to, to working from home and having that window into your space. Another quick example, um, Julie Bishop. So Julie Bishop became the Minister for Ageing in 2003. And Julie was a gorgeous dresser. She used to wear Armani suits and, um, and she was told uh, that she had to dress appropriately as the Minister for Ageing. So she had to wear big colours and patterns and pearls and, um, and not, not be her. And she did. She tried it. And then she was like, no, I'm not doing it. 
and she started rocking her true self. And you can see the difference. Granted, one is back in 2003, but you can see the difference. She even rocks these beautiful red ruby shoes in, in Parliament. I just think it's fabulous. And her message out is own yourself. Don't let anyone else own you. Be you and do what you need to do. Um, so the next one is live it, become the expert. And the final one is to share it. So campaign everywhere and anywhere, on and offline. And what that actually means is omni-channel. So omni-channel is we're not anymore going through one channel. It's about being in as many channels as you can and activating as many channels both on and offline all at the same time. Now, lots of people um, <clears throat> of our age, Tim, <laughs> who grew up pre-digital are still not always thinking in um, omni-channel. But younger generations who grew up in the digital era, it's just how they, it's just what they know and it's just that is natural to them. So I wanted to give you this tool um, and this is a, a little tool to think about how you're building your personal brand. So if you get really clear on those three elements that we shared with you, your who, your purpose and your asset, then this is a great tool to have a look. You might be starting from scratch or you might already have a personal brand um, and be working on it. So we want you to look at an audit. Do you write any news feeds? Do you do any press? Do you do interviews? Internally, do you write articles for your intranet site? Um, do you um, write podcasts or do you, do you do podcasts? Do you use your LinkedIn effectively? Endorsements. Can you endorse someone or can somebody endorse you who is the expert in the area? Um, hero product. So this is one of the things around when you create a special event that people will know you for. Um, a guru product. Uh, you could write a book, you could be interviewed, you could do, uh, you could do a YouTube channel, Tim. <laughs> you could. Um, awards. Uh, have, you, have you won awards in your industry? Have you gone for an award strategy? Some businesses and some people. Even inside the business, there are a lot of businesses have awards inside the business. Have you yeah. gone for any of those awards? Have you, have you stood up and sort of said, I deserve to be acknowledged? <laughs> yeah. And, and look at what you need to do to, to get there. Um, networking. So networking. Oh, when I was uh, when I was at Navo, I so I don't have time to. I was so busy. You know, I don't have time to network. It's so important internally and externally. Internally is going to mean that you get more opportunities within the business, but externally is so important. So you can take the brand, the business brand, out to market with your own personal brand. Articles, videos, speaking. You know, can you speak um, keynote events? Can you speak at internal events? Offer to speak. Tell people that that's what, what, what's on your development program and, um, and, and just get up and do it. Um, it's, one and then, of, it's one of people's greatest fears is speaking. <laughs> so we yeah. acknowledge that as well. So that is more for us, like people in striker and midfield will be more comfortable in the speaking spot, spot slots. But I still encourage even defence people uh, to learn how to get up and have a conversation at a boardroom table or a, uh, at, at, the, at the kitchen table or the, uh, just, to, just to get in front of groups of people and, and learn how to speak what it is that you're about. Um, I, I encourage that uh, enormously. Absolutely. And the last one is social media. So, again, there's lots of different platforms. Um, if we're looking at business and LinkedIn is going to be really important. Um, but social media is just one element. You can see there are so many different ways of building that profile. And finally, I want you just to go and Google yourself. So I've just Googled myself and there's, you know, the first couple of pages are all about what I do, the speaking events I've spoken at, what's coming up. But Google yourself now and go and find out what profile and what story you're sharing out to market. And then go through the exercise and work out what you want to do. And you, it, it's not a fast exercise, but you just need to slowly keep working at it. And then you'll look back and, and your story will have, have started to create itself. Okay, just think about this. So um, uh, if, you, if you're looking to progress yourself through an organisation, 
um, it's incredibly important that you do actually have a profile um, and your personal profile is an asset because your next employer um, or your next partner inside the business or your ex, your next, whoever it's going to be that you're going to be moving towards will Google you. Um, there's no doubt they'll get onto Google and they'll look you up to see where, where you sit in Google. So it's incredibly important to build that up over time so people understand what your authentic value is all about. If you don't put your authentic value out there, then no one else is going to put it out there for you. You need to put it out there and let people know what When, when people know what you stand for and you can own what you stand for, um, then people know um, uh, uh, your value and they'll know what to do and they'll know how to help you. Uh, so it's incredibly important. Um, so Sarah, do you want to take us through the summary? Sure. So just three key takeaways. So would love you to remember that personal brand is not a social media exercise. It's not about being famous. It's not about being a celebrity. It's about creating an asset. It's your asset. It's going to pull the opportunities. Once you can create that asset, that means you're going to pull the opportunities and that creates the value. It creates value for you, but also you're giving value by creating that profile. And finally, just remember that Google fame, you are already a brand. Internally within the business, you're already a brand and externally you are. So find out what, your, what profile you're already sharing and then you can use the, the steps to, to start to build that profile out. Can I, can I, can I summarise with this as well for, the organ, for an organisation as a whole? Um, so if an organisation is operating and they've got the organisational brand, that's one thing. And it's incredibly important for that, uh, the organisation to understand its purpose and its asset as well, as well as its who. Um, and then if you have every single person inside the organisation understanding what their personal brand's about and the value that they bring to that organisation and they're connected in energetically with that, then that's extraordinarily powerful in the marketplace. Now, right the way through this L-shaped recession, everyone needs to understand and know the value that they bring so that they're able to get that out into the marketplace on behalf of the organisation. Because the more the positive energy that you can put out into your marketplace about the brand that you represent, as well as your personal brand, means that you're going to be more valuable through this next phase and you'll set yourself up for the growth uh, from 2021 to 2031. Love it. So... We'd love to keep in touch with you as well. If you've got any questions, um, if you want to reach out, then um, there's our social media handles or connect in with Tim and I on LinkedIn as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you very much, Tim. Um, I've certainly learned a lot. I mean, I was sat there, you know, as you were um, kind of talking, actually Googling myself and, and realizing that there's um, quite a bit of work for, for me to do personally. And, and I actually thought I was quite good at, at personal branding. So um, it's definitely a, a journey that, that I need to go on. Um, anyone can reach out to Sarah and Tim via our Intact Beyond website um, by clicking on their expert page as well. And please reach out um, on the details below. So look, thank, guys, thank um, you, really wanted to have a quick um, catch up with you, just understand kind of, you know, looking into the future and, and, and what you what you believe the future to be. Um, how do you see the workplace um, and the working community transitioning and transforming beyond this period? Well, the, the, the main thing is, is uh, uh, pre-pandemic um, uh, and pre-L-shaped recession, um, the, the, the world was patterned in to going and employing someone uh, for the capability they have and the task they can perform. Um, post-pandemic, post-L-shaped recession, people are going to be looking at the whole human and, and all the value that they can bring to an organisation and to a business and a brand. Um, and so in order to do that, people need to know it themselves because that's what the organisations are looking for and what they need to be able to take advantage of the next phase of growth. So that's the key element in all of this. Fantastic. Anything to add, Sarah? 
I, I think that the emotional um, element is, for me, one of the most important. It's, it's how the trends we're looking at um, is we need to just be able to connect emotionally. And I just want people to be able to own that. Um, and the benefit for the organisation and the benefit for the, for the person together makes it so powerful. I, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, when we are going through the, these times of change, um, you know, it's an ideal time to reach out and to build um, relationships and to, to support your, your colleagues, your friends, your, your neighbours, your, your community, because we are all going through this time together. It is extremely challenging. Um, we need to not just um, you know, support each other during these, these, you know, these, these bad times, but also learn to celebrate the successes and the small wins day by day. Um, I'm definitely noticing more of a sense of community, um, you know, even just in my street, um, you know, in, in my suburb as I'm kind of walking around. Um, and I really hope, as I said earlier, that we take those positives and, and we, we continue with those into the future. Yeah, I, I, I believe we will as we go through this um, and we, as we go through, we, we're going through, there's going to be uh, quite a bit of an emotional um, shift all the way through this next 18 months. Uh, because of the pandemic and because of the recession. So we're going to be going through quite a roller coaster uh, of an emotional. Now, what that means, though, is we're all going through it together yeah. uh, globally. Um, and so as a result of going through an experience like this, a crisis like this together, uh, it means that we can uh, actually come together more strongly as a result. So um, I'm, I'm of a very strong belief that we're going to come out of this um, a, a lot stronger community um, and a lot stronger businesses and a lot stronger uh, individuals uh, as a result. So, um, yeah. Fantastic. Building that resilience kind of throughout this time and, and learning, I think, is something that we're all, all doing. Yeah, I, I think that it's a really important point. It's, there's a difference between a resilience um, and, and uh, um, defence. So some, some people will put on a facade um, and put up a, I'm all right sort of stuff. But in actual fact, none of us are all right. <laughs> uh, we're all going through this and we all need to shift. We all need to grow. And we're all going to go through our emotions and our fears uh, through this process. It's about actually putting that on the table and being authentic and being real about it and then working out how we're going to uh, create a team of people to be able to get, get, get ourselves through this and, and, and really set up for the next phase of growth because the next phase of growth is, is uh, uh, terribly exciting. I mean, yeah. yeah it's hugely yeah. hopeful and and that's the message I want to leave people with is it's difficult what we're going through now but it's going to be much better so we're predicting September 2021 is the biggest period of growth and there's going to be so many opportunities so do the work now get yourself ready build your profile get ready for that growth fantastic thank you so much guys and look on, on behalf of the intact beyond team um, and the community thank you very much for sharing your expertise today very Thank well. you. Much appreciated, Nicole.